that they can't walk away with this one without being unscathed a little bit. Like, I feel like this is going to be at least a dog fight for them still. Oh, yeah. And, you know, and Explosives is somewhere watching this one like, you know what, I've been going on vacation, but, you know, look like the ship's still <laughs> running. We're back in the 2K Finals. The boys got it done. And uh, we'll see what they can do. But contenders, they got what it takes. They are the best team in this matchup, but we'll see if the score will show it in the end. All right, ladies and gentlemen, kicking things off on Greenwall. We're going to take a look at Optic Mentor, MVP in Gears of War, one of the best players in the game and one of the most clutch out there. But the first blood will go to City Time. Tony is going to fall, but Mentor now chasing a kill, finds himself in a 1v2, and gets the up A. Getting Sleepy Time out of here. Now, in a separate 1v1 against Rezik, Blaze, is he gonna do it? He, he, you know, he, he, he knows when he has clean 1v1, he knows when he has control of the fight, when he has help. Ooh. But that's a great shot by Rezik, but, you know, he's full red in that one. Praise tries to have Mensos back. You're gonna see a two hill control for the green wall locked in so far. And uh, Praise, he's pushed down a little bit towards the enemy side of the map, but he does have help. It's gonna be Zerting there with him. And they're gonna recognize that, hey, you know what? It's too many smokes, too many people here. We gotta get backed up a little bit. But you see, they only back up just enough. They don't give up the whole alleyway. They know that they can stay here a little bit and, you know, kind of have this map control. And Praise is staying in, you know, being that power stone, coming on through, and being that muscle for the team. Now you see three players from the green one now falling the summons. He's gonna break the cycle, taking out Icy. So now we're gonna take a look at both of these players capturing the B Hill. Now on the praise, what is he gonna do? He's gonna slowly gather some information to see where he can rotate. You see all the contenders now with map control in the middle. They're gonna push them it's towards a, the a, hill there. So you, you, you see Green Wall is trying to defend their home hill. Contenders yeah. saying, hey, you know what? Since we can't get beat, let's go and uh, take care of this home hill setup and try to push through that bell tower, uh, that bell tower alleyway. But did not work out for them. Green Wall pressing these players of contenders back down now. And, you know, the one reason why I'm, like, so uncertain is because, you know, it's got to be mental on his host these last two. You know, now host is just a server, but, you know, but still, it's got to be mental there the last two maps. You still have him there, the playmaker on his team. You still have Summons in his positions, extending these rounds, being that one one player. And you still have Crazy being that powerhouse. And you best believe Toddy and Zerfding ain't got nothing to lose. Nothing. And they're playing with three of the best players in the game. This is where they can shine and be the best versions of themselves. So this is not going to be an easy matchup of contenders whatsoever. Right, the domination was denied. Contenders was putting up a fight, but is that going to be too late? <laughs> you hear the sound coming. The score is 190 to 121. There's no hills on the side of the contenders, but the green wall, they're running away. They have one hill cap. The B and C hills have no owners yet. And Summons pushing the kill, pushing a nice shot, second shot on point, and he's able to take out Red. Yeah, and that's going to be Green Wall. They get done, they get the first round in through time, and that came down. What we're going to credit that to? Their successful B Hill setup. Yeah, they had such a presence over there. They controlled it for most of the map. They had great rotations also too when it came down to defending that home hill when contenders tried to push for it mid round. So after doing both of those. It's, it's just hard to come back from that because this team, this is still a well-disciplined team, you know? They still have three of the, you know, three players from the best team in the world here, and they still gonna have these same strategies where it just comes down to somebody else kind of stepping up for that IGL, yeah. and you know, you put in Zerp, Ding, and Tati, and Solar is in explosive positions, right? But now, you also need somebody else kind of stepping up to be that IGL, but at the same time, when you got mental on your team, it's just, it's, you're having fun. It takes some pressure off your shoulders. Fun. Mm -mm. Oh, and I'm pretty sure he's stepping up in, in uh, Explosive's act absence. One player that really stepped up, even though the B Hill was pretty big, we saw Tony go ahead and get a double carry, playing defense for Greenwall, making sure contenders didn't have a successful push. But oh, he's going to get pushed by taking out. We need to work together. All right, he would have put out nice shots, but Zerf being able that, to get the trade. It still should never came down to a trade. No. That's the, you know, that's still the bad part. Instead, you, you would have had two players pushing for this home hill instead of one, right? That could have been the difference maker. That could have got you this round guarantee. But now, Praise off the respawn. He's back in it, trying to win this fight. Slipping and sliding. Rush comes out on top. Zemmis falls as well. But Zerp ain't having any of that. Zerp is coming in, getting the double kill. Rush, he's a franchise. Get out of here. I, and Zerp I told you, he might, have his best, he might have his best game. 
He might have his best game. He just might. He's been a free agent for a while now. You know, we'll see. Uh, you know, Zerpting and Tati, you know, two of the two two of the young guns, uh, they will not be able to compete in Mexico City. Uh, so they're gonna be at home watching, you know, sending them some love. So, but you know, this is gonna be their last highlight moment. <laughs> you know, till till after the event, uh, unless they make it back into the next two K, uh, one of our last two two Ks that we have before the event. But they're gonna make the most of being in the spotlight again. Well, like, who doesn't want to be optic for a day? <laughs> right? I, I think that's the big point. Who doesn't want the green green wall fans cheering for you? So if you got green wall fans out there. And Optic does come out on top. You guys got to make sure you show Zerfding and Tati some love for yes. holding down the wall, holding down the fort while explosives and soldiers are away. Let's just show some love. Follow them on Twitter. Funny guys. Make sure you follow every single player in this game, by the way. Um, Contenders, though. They're pushing down his back alleyway. They have the big hill under their control, but most importantly, they're going to get their home hill back so they can have this two hill advantage. It's Icy who's locking his Lancer down. He knows the push is coming. He has some help. He's trying to get some damage in on these players to get his shotty out right away, but he drops back to help his teammate, and then they both go down. In that situation, if I'm Icy, I got to have the discipline to just pull my pistol out right there and help him and hold my ground uh, and not let nobody come up behind him. But they're going to get slayed out, and here comes the pressure up top. The B-Hill goes in favor of the great wall. It's contender, just rushing on that defensive stand. He gets flanking, Zerpting. He takes out middle. He picks up a double, but he knows he has to put in some extra work after killing his teammate, and it's going to be contenders who survive now. So you got to ask yourself, what is going to be their next play? The next play is definitely playing it safe. Make sure you don't give up. Um, your, your heels, the only way the green wall can win is by getting a domination. And if you hold these for less than 10 seconds, you're going to run away with round number two. So we're going to be looking at a tie map count in the next few seconds. But most importantly, one thing that I think we want to do, regardless of, you know, they knew that they were going to win this round probably 20 or so seconds. But what they did not do, 20 or so seconds ago, but what they did not do was turtle on that one heel, right? Yeah. They still said, hey, you know what? We're going to win off this. It's looking good. We could stay here, but let's just push out. Let's have at least one player push out towards the other heels, right? Yeah. Even though we're going to win this round and we're 100% we're confident that we are, let's be 110% confident exactly. and cap that and, and go fight for some other heels and make sure we have two heels capped. And some teams sometimes turtle too soon and give up too much map control when they still should be out there playing 110%. Playing not to lose compared to playing to win, it makes a big difference. But now we're going to take a look at the Hammer Burst now being placed in the dual spawn spot over near Town Hall and Military Base. Taking a look at the strategy so far, two backs, one middle and another one under the bed. All right, this green wall pushing down. Looks like they're going to get a little bit more of that real estate towards this B area. You see one player capping the hill kind of freely, but he knew he had to be cautious. That smoke uh, had that player unstunned that was right in front of him. So it's 2v2 stalemate, and it looks like Green Wall, they're, they're looking for to see if Contenders is going to do something, move differently. But at this point, you're waiting for the fights to be won elsewhere. You're going to wait for your teammates to get map control because as soon as your teammates, because they probably have to call out where they say, hey, we're winning fights. We got one down. We got two down, right? When you know your teammates are being productive on the other side of the map, you know that, hey, these two guys got to push me. They got to push us soon because if they don't push us, then, you know, they're just going to end up getting trapped. But you, they knew they were going to push them out of desperation and having to make a play. And you saw Zerg digging free take okay. advantage of that situation. And they're slowly moving down map, you know, making sure nobody gets behind them, right? And that's the most important thing is to make sure you cover all lanes because if you know that nobody's behind you, then that's a, a call out for your teammates saying, hey, all these guys are down in a tunnel area of their home. Everybody's on the same page. It makes the round easier for you. Zerpting, playing without fear for his life. He had Mitchell behind him supporting, and he was pushing every 1v1 with the most confidence in the world. And now he's pushing another, taking out Red Eye. He has two more in front of him. No, no, no. Zerpting, able to get it down in the kill with Nothing. one shot. No way! Zerg! That's a bad man. Nothing. Okay. Hey, Zerg under the bright lights on Fight Night, making the most of his opportunity. No pressure. Green wall going up 2-1. That was cold, Blaze. No pressure. That was cold. Hey, you see how comfortable he is when he's having, when he's there having fun? Coming out on top, right? Man. But I want Zerg to, to to remember this, right? And then when he gets on his next team. Yeah. And he's back under that spotlight, so right? He's happy. And he's back him. under that pressure. He needs to remember 
when I have fun, I play my best. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But you know, when the when entire team has good vibes, yep. I'm going to always play my best. So what can I do to make sure my entire team is on the same page as me? Yeah, Zerpting Not on the same on the same page as having good vibes. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So so you guys at home know Zerpting was actually replaced on his last two teams. Now he's playing with the best of the best on top out of everybody in the lobby with 13 kills. And he's so far the MVP, top slain in every way possible. All right, so you're going to see a 3v3 fight towards that backstreet area in the alleyway. And they're going to go on down there, looking to get in and get these fights. I see he's going to get double teamed very, very quickly. And it just took one player to make a decision saying, hey, you know what? Let me help my teammate with his fight and put one shot there and come back to fight in my fight. If you're able to do that quickly and able to decipher when it's time to do that throughout the chaos of those big team fights, you can put your team up on top. Oh, yeah. Seven is taking out Resic in a 1v1 in the middle. You only have two players left alive, four contenders. You see him coming out of spawn, going towards that A hill. Green wall, flirting with it just a little bit, making sure that they stay focused and most importantly, they're wasting time. Frey's getting a double kill. Summons getting a double kill of his own, taking out both franchises sleepy time. And the domination comes through for the green wall as they go up 3-1 against contenders. But Blaze, in that initial fight, what went wrong? We saw Rush, he's picked up the boom shot, he suicided, and then it was just a, a complete breakdown. But also, like I said, it came down to, I forgot, it was one player in the green wall. Um, it was it was Carmine, it was Icy fighting on 1v1. And yeah. that guy said, you know what? Forget my 1v1. Let me put one shot in on Icy, make that a 2v1. Make the most Get the, the numbers for my team. You know what I'm saying? The next thing you know, they kept picking off 2v1s. Yep. But this is within a 10-second or 5-second window of you have to have this chaotic team fight. So you have to have the presence of mind to make those split-second decisions and not just have tunnel vision on one player. Yeah. Because you can easily break away from that guy and put something and help your teammate Being out very selfless. quickly. Right? Being selfless. And, and you got to always think about, even when you're fighting, can I help my teammate right now? Yeah. Thinking like that is so crucial. So going to be back on board and going to be on board with Tati. And so, you know, he, they're going to be backed up. And they're going to get some smokes in. But that boom, uh, that you know, we're going to have a well-placed smoke for contenders to allow them to get that boom and get in there. So Rushies gets one. And now it's Zerp thing saying, hey, you know what? I got three people in front of me. They don't know I'm here. Franchise has not been alerted. Make very little to no movements. Get it. Zerp thing puts out a nice shot. Two shots on Rush. It gets the damn. Oh, oh, he's not even going for oh, me, but he is. How much damage did he get down? Him? Oh, he was four life. red. Trying to look. He, he, he got down at 37. Almost got the second. Uh, because even if he weren't traded that second, that was the win. That, that would have been amazing. Taking out one was the win. Yeah. Being honest about it. Now someone's going to save his hill. He really danced along in it just a little bit. A frag grenade is coming. Somehow dodge it by sitting in the corner. Contenders. But it's not going to be enough. Contenders. Tony. They have to win these last two rounds. They have to start to come back. And they, they're going to have to start getting this round. They're towards the end. They, oh! They can't allow, even a kill like that, you really can't allow to happen because, oh, that was a good melee to slow him down. But even that melee hitting praise, will it be enough? Here comes two more players. They should be able to get touches. The smoke hits the ground, but they cannot. So that was a great contenders round. Yeah. And they knew that, hey, what's this? You know, they knew it was a 22 second respawn round. They just had to, you know, get in there. My fault, a 20 second respawn round. They knew they just had to, you know, slow those guys down, kill them one by one, just get five more kills off the home hill. They'll secure themselves a victory. That's exactly what they did. So, contenders, let's see if they can tie it up two to two. Optic Gaming choosing to put the incense down at Bell Tower. And, uh, you know, that's still going to be a 1v1 fight over there. But the focus is going to be back towards that mid map area. And it's also going to be towards that boom shot. You got Zerp thing rocking that 2.0 for Optic for, for the green wall. But we'll see what contenders got for that 2.0 that he has. Yeah, we're going to see a mirror strap. Montero going more towards the mid hill. But Rushy's full red. He's going to back out Rushy. Not <laughs> knowing the value of his life as much. That's the way he about that, but he gets down. Three kills for contenders. The revive comes through. What do you do with these quick three kills? So that's going to be four kills. This is a 22-second respawn oh, round. Dude, the, the last name. member just got marked. So you, you got one player on your team coming up off respawn in 12 seconds. It's going to take him forever to get to your home hill. That's domination. Fran, does he have another boom shot, though, is what I want to know. Throw the nades. Throw the nades, Sleepy. Make sure you win. Is he? Oh, no. 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 Why, why is it so close? <laughs> no, it bounced back out. What are y'all looking at? What was happening? What are y'all? Oh, no. my God. What, what was he looking at? Toddy, he's empty. Whoa. 
bro. You got a whole, you got a whole boom in needs. How you, how you let Stop the help come through and destroy y'all like that? They were supposed to win this. Oh, man. Okay, and, 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 that, and that's why even Contenders fans knew why we were like, I don't know if they're going to win this one, even with three-fifths of optic. Well, he had two nays in his pocket. I thought he was just going to, you know, swing them, you know, save some time. Let's see if Contenders, they haven't lost it yet. They had a mishap, but in the end, they still have the lead. This is a 22 second respawn round. Typically when you die, you should not get a chance to respawn. But we're gonna have a second wave of team fights coming through. Toddy, he's gonna break ice. So it's a man advantage in favor of Optic Gaming. I see trap between a rock and a hard place. He goes down. That's four members down now for contenders on a round in which they should have won. It's all up to Rushies. Can he make the big play? That's gonna be one. He needs two. Can't get it done, no. The domination coming in. And the green wall takes the lead for two. What is it about? I think I think we have to know that Toddy actually went on what was that a five kill streak right there coming out of spawn? Oh. Yeah, he was part of um, the duo. You know, Toddy and Zerpty came out of spawn, <laughs> but they got the double kill. And Toddy just he he got loose. He mm -hmm. he ran around and just started killing people. So hey, green wall coming up from that mm -hmm. win. Mm -hmm. Contenders should be tied three three. <laughs> It's okay, but contenders, they're going to have to, they got great leadership on the roster. Yeah. They're going to have to say, hey, you know what? Let's put this behind us, okay? <laughs> Let's come out to new half. We have new hills. Respawn time is back down to 10 seconds. Let's get back uh, into this one. And now we're going to have a 2v2 fight middle and a 2v2 fight across the map on the bell tower. This is Franchise playing a 1v1 scenario against Toddy on this end. So if this team loses that team fight off the other end, he probably is going to have to be aggressive to push on through and, and, and take this fight against Toddy to get map control. But Toddy's recognizing that his team's winning fights. He doesn't have to... Oh, no! Why he bait him like that? No. Toddy! That wasn't even like fresh bait. It was like old bait, too. Toddy. You know, he... The youngster. But he, you know, he took him out, and now Toddy's pushing down for map control. Domination. <laughs> Is coming in, and I don't think nobody's gonna get to that home hill in time. Nope. Can I be honest, Clay? Yeah, be honest. When, when that movie, what happened? When Toddy turned the corner, I didn't know who died at first. I was like, oh, Toddy got bodied. He's stupid. Yeah, I, at first I thought he did too, but then I saw that blue cock character running right down the like, hill, and I was like, oh no. His knees buckled. I was like, oh, franchise dies. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, that's just unfortunate <laughs> what happened in that one, but. It is going to be a big power in place down at Bell Tower because this map was pretty spread out, right? You had two at Bell Tower, two Market. You had a 1v1 at Backstreet. Pretty normal base setup when we see the game start. Yep. Uh, but now, with the drop shot being placed down low, you're going to have one more player. Maybe even, may, you might have the home hill player go over there, or you might have one of those players from mid map have to come over towards that Bell Tower because you at least want three players in this area fighting for it. And it's looking like both teams is going to take the home hill player and bring him to the fight at the drop shot. All right, you see the smoke's coming out. I see now going in to help out his teammate. Nobody picked up the drop shot just yet, but Toddy is going to be the victim of the first blood franchise. Getting a double kill. He's going to have both Toddy and Summons, the OG. Doing it big, a sleepy time gets a double kill of his own. You're gonna have one more player from the green wall alive, and that's gonna be mental. He is out of play. Contenders are looking well. I, I wanna say, I almost wanna say I saw at least one of the teams run four to the bell tower. I will see off the opening break on the next round. But I don't think you should ever need to run four to bell tower. The reason, so, the reason why is that you put two to mid map. If your opponent wants to run four to bell tower, you have a free kill in middle or you have a free cross. You play for the free cross, not the kill. You play to keep that guy down low so your one teammate has a free lance across right over the gate inside bell tower. Yeah. That way it's still technically a 4v4 fight, but you have one player who just cannot die and who's just lantering everybody in turn, you know, opening up doors for your three teammates that are that are there. So uh, and I'll, so that's why I always believe you should at least have two players in market and even giving them something to play for uh, that will even increase those chances. Now you have needs and you can get those needs and you can throw them towards the alleyway or the bell tower. In this situation, it's going to be the bell tower because that's where that drop shot is now. All right. So take a look at the overhead. And Matthew, you see the rotations come about. We saw them send two players to market on the green wall side and 
when they saw four going bell tower, we saw players switch. Here we go. Contenders into basically. Oh, we don't go. need four there. So contenders, I say they should have that advantage. They went for the quick pick though, and they he still even, they got the power weapon. They should be able to get names too. But you have Zerting through this smoke. You see how chaotic it, it, it can be, right? And I think they sent four, and in the end they will come Stop out on top. Praise. Stop it, praise. What was that? Uh, Pray, so they got, they got, they got two players going down low to fight for the home hill. Zerping's gonna cap this and go fight for the home hill as well. The remaining two players off of Optic Gaming will cap that home hill in the back. Zerping's gonna keep map control. I don't think he needs to be here. He needs to be with the rest of his team because, but he wants to protect the E hill. But Zerping has to know that in this situation, no one from contenders will possibly go to E, and that I need to be closer to my teammates yeah. to defend that home hill because he, he almost had the right play. He was like 75% there. Uh, but because I felt like Green Walker got trip cap domination after Nero. But he will back out and his game plan was to defend the E-Hill and that's exactly what he's doing. Now trying to help his teammate. The pressure's gonna come his way and he's a little bit too close. This is where he has to use that movement and to get away or be a superstar. And look like he no, wants to be no. a superstar. Zerting! I'm gonna, I'm gonna tell your mama, you've been a bad boy this game. Man, Hell don't yeah. be a snitch. You know? <laughs> 24 kills, 12 deaths. Zerfting is having his way with the contenders at this very moment. Looking for his third kill in a row. But first, he's gonna go ahead and make sure his teammate captures the F hill. All right. So, you know, they're gonna push out a little bit. Even if, even if your opponent is respawning, Get to, get to the areas of the map where their respawn timers run out. You don't want to be close to them while they still have that spawn shield, right? Spawn shield equals invincibility. Yeah. That player cannot die. But it runs out in 10 seconds. It's only so far you can get at 10 seconds. So when you play a lot, you realize this is how far my spawn shield will take me. And in turn, on the flip end, when you're keeping a team in spawn, yeah. that's typically the, the line, the imaginary line saying this is how far I should be able to be pushed up and uh, be able to be a nuisance to my opponent before they able to get any type of map control. If we ever have a have an opportunity to take map control away from our from our opponents, you do it. We do it. No we question. don't second guess it. If we look around like, man, this area is kind of empty. What can I? You better get go, you better, right you better go area. push and go go <laughs> go take some map control. Exactly. Right. Uh, <laughs> get some clarity for your team. Up, boy. Once again, contenders choosing to put in two. Optic flooded four. I don't agree with it, but we'll see if it works for them this round. The last round was scrappy, but I think this round they was able to utilize those numbers and get in there and get that drop shot. Green wall, it's, it's looking ugly. No, it, it, you know why it's ugly? Because you can allow mental to win a 1v2 mid-map while four members of the green wall are fighting at Bell Tower. Contenders need to say, hey, That's we good. either need to push him aggressively in a 2v1 situation, or we need to both throw our smokes at him in such a way where we quick pick these grenades and toss him into that Bell Tower. Maybe contenders go back and look at that one and say, our front spawn should have went mid-map. Shut up. Our front you missed an event? I actually do know all the events that I missed. You, so you have? I, yeah, I can count on one hand how many. I thought you've been to them all. Uh, no, it's, it's some early ones that were invite only that I didn't make. It's only w one event, one, two events. I didn't go to one hype event. Okay. And I didn't go to one MLG event, which was the finals in 2008, because it was top eight qualified and I got ninth. <laughs> all right. <laughs> or 10th, one of them. All right, ladies and gentlemen, in the chat, I want to see who you think are going to come out on top. Can I get a one for Green Wall and two for Contenders? We're going to kick things off on map number two, Harbor. Let's see if Contenders can go ahead and fight back in, even the score. On board with the end game leader franchise, a professional player since Gears 1. He's going to be in the front here. He has summons in his sights, putting in some pistol fire. Summons is definitely taking damage, and he's down. He's down. So now, franchise. With Mentor in front of him, he's going to go ahead and push for the 1v1 against Zerfting, but Zerfting comes out on top. And now Zerfting coming in, cleaning up. That's four members down on that side. So Zerfting is like, hey, I need to go for the home hill. See if he's like, I got to fight that 1v1, but I got to, you know, give up B in the same sense. So Zerfting, he's going for the decap and he's backing up. He understands that this is a 12 second respawn round. This is going to be crazy. I just want to decap and try to get, line, get out of here and play my life. And, you know, he is gonna end up going down there. So he did what he wanted to do. You still got the green wall still pushed up and, and set up as well. But what I want to see, I at least want to see the green wall get in there and decap that V hill. I thought that was just super important, but now it's there. Franchise chasing uh -oh. praise for praise. Coming uh -oh. up on the flank. Demons with the shot off. No! 
Brave whips the shot. Sleepy time. Sleepy time. Let me get the headshot. Sleepy time, put him to sleep. <laughs> We can make puns about sleepy all day. But, uh, <laughs> he's going to be in his winch area of the map, and he's going to have a shotty out. He knows that this is a 1v1, but he's getting shot from his left somewhere. I saw a few bullets fly over there. Yeah, it's a player from the green wall on top of the home hill of sleepy time. He was under pressure, but he planted his feet, and he held his ground. And this area of the map is such a power position. You see the angles in which he's able to see. He's getting uh, a head count. we got three players here. i got one going towards the B hill. Do you need some help? And he's looking for the angle where he can jump and help his teammate as soon as possible, but he's more worried about he has a lot of pressure on him, and he's just trying to stay alive, and his teammate's not able to get there as soon as possible. Now, I look at it from Sleepy's point of view, and I'm like, I've been in this spot for a long time. What can we get from it? Right. Can we at least get the B? Let me die to help you get this B hill if that's the case, uh, or he needs to kind of get out of there. But you're going to see Greenwald is going to put that pressure back on them, cap up that neutral hill, and they can win off a two hill advantage, but currently, they're playing for the domination and four members down on contender side. That's exactly what they're going to get. All right, contenders now picking up a win. Oh, excuse me, that was Greenwald. Excuse me, Greenwald picking up a win. You know, setting the tone for map number two. Zerpting still on top of the boards. The man is showing out, letting everybody know that he's still a great player in the scene, no matter what you've seen from the last event. Yeah. And Icy, looking man, at the weapon to put down. Surf things and Toddy's Gears of War careers just started. Their esports careers in general yeah. just started over these last few years, right? Uh, we're going to be seeing these guys for a long time. They're the future of Gears. They really are. So the future. I, I, can, I can see as long as Gears are around, they'll probably be competing. It. Aren't they both 16 years old? Mm-hmm. That's insane. Young guns, baby. But that's how, that's how this entire, you know, uh, you know, pretty much the Optic Gaming roster has started, right? Yeah. They're all some of the youngest players that came up through, you know, year three. Warriors, online warriors. Yeah, that's what we called them. And, you know, anytime they kicked our butts online, we say it's an online warrior. You ain't going to do it on land. And they actually did it on land. <laughs> they, they came to, to Hype and got like third or fourth. And it was like, ooh. I was like, okay. Hold up. That was your first your first land jitters, and that's what y'all do? I was just playing. You good? Actually, they went to the finals, I want to say. They went to the finals in Hype 3. That's Indianapolis, right? Yeah. I remember. All right, franchise getting taken down by Praise. But Praise picks up a double kill, taking Rashi's down as well. Two players left alive for contender secret time and icy. But you see the rotation come from the green wall, making sure that they're going to get that A hill. The C hill has been decapped. And the B hill is the last one standing in contender's possession. If they're able to get that, we're going to see a triple cap. But in this current 1v1, Summons is full red and getting some help from his teammate, franchise. He's going to go down. Yeah, and you know, he's keeping as much map control as he can. He knows that, hey, if I can keep this upper area uh, side where, where the secondary weapon spawns up contenders, if I can control this, they can never get to be here without fighting me first, right? Yeah. You put that 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 first line of defense closer to their spawn, which in turn, uh, you know, makes it a lot harder, and it takes more time for them to get those key hills in which they need. And that's why you should always be pressing off the map control, no matter what. But stay safe. You know, don't put yourself in a situation where you're going to die. As soon as you realize that, oh, man, I'm about to get pushed by two different people and I have no help, you better be screaming in that mic. Yeah, that right now. Sleepy time in charge of putting down a power weapon for contenders. Blaze, what would you put down this this week? You got to go up top. You got to go up top. I, I, I told you that, you know, and on a map like Harbor, sometimes you got to go for those dual spots depending on who this. you plan. You I know? love it. And contenders saying, hey, you know what? Uh, our strength is the big team fight towards middle, right? Yeah. Plan for that middle weapon, spreading it out, uh, not playing that up top fight so heavy, which, you know, typically everybody's prepared for, right? That's base strats everybody know. And the base strat is controlling Winch and Stern. So uh, a lot of your top teams are going to be talented at that fight. But we really see who practices these team fights when you put that boom in map, because this is a very unorthodox one. All right, now taking a look at the overview of the map, you see how the team is set up. We're pretty much looking at a mirror image between both rosters. Icy and Toddy both being extremely passive over there in their home hill. They're not shooting each other, but they're shooting for their teammates in the battle up top. Oh. We see Summons pushing a 1v1 against Franchise. Rushy surely behind him, caught himself in another 1v1. He's able to get Beautiful. down and a kill Beautiful. in both of the fights up top were won by contenders. Beautiful rotation there. Fran came in for the help on Rushy's. You, to, to kill Summons, but Summons transitioned up top of Fran and told his teammate to go pick up on Rush. He's been, I think it was Praise, missed that shot, and Rush, he's made him pay for it. Yeah. So contenders, they have the pressure, going to have five members alive. They're going to cross out Mental now. They have no heals, Cat. 
and this is going to be a 16 second respawn round as well so we'll see if contenders can get closer to the home hill green wall but why you got these players respawns uh you know so spread out you need to make sure you constantly take those main advantages because one player will always come to that hill by himself you keep two players there you're gonna have you're gonna have separate 2v1s but a veteran team will, will kind of slow down and wait for the rest of their teammates to respawn if they can but in this situation you can't oh, yeah. wait that long contenders get the job done utilize their numbers understand the situation in which they're in and they come out and win round number three hats off to IEC staying alive for so long in the green hill spawn home hill area where basically all of their focus went to him he wasn't dying he wasn't forcing up close one v ones he made sure he kept his distance and wasted as much time as possible for his teammates to capture all the hills necessary pick up the boom shot and then come along to help him for the domination so now only being down by one round icy is now leading the way with seven kills seven downs and now four deaths let's see if you can keep up that flame let's see all right uh so we are gonna get our sniper placed up top and uh we typically see that there but the main strategy is not going to change you got the 1v1 for that power position on which 3v3 fight for the quick pick up that boom shot in a 1v1 at b because you got to at least have one player protect the other two lanes that are, that are open Jeez. and rushies he's going to catch one down low we'll see if he can catch any more oh that looked good to me that looked good to me Rushy's winning the 1v1 against Summons, getting a headshot across the map on Toddy. Now looking for another headshot Ooh. or another kill in general, able to take out Mental with an up A. Getting three kills before and he being taken out. If he didn't miss roll, he might have got the third as well. But Probably. as you see, Zerp thing is going to be there. They both pretty much came in and in at the same time, same Gears of War class. Uh, but you know, actually, I can, yeah. Hmm. I was thinking about that as a whole. You know, I more so, just, you know, saw Rush. He's more so in Gears UE. Yeah. I was playing in the Sunday tournaments. Always. Uh, because it was more pro league in Gears UE. So anybody who didn't make the pro league was playing every Sunday grind. Yeah. And those, uh, Rush was grind. I remember him oh, yeah, playing with those um, mints and, um, Decline. Straight yes. Feet. Straight feet. That's what yep, I was thinking that of. That whole roster. Decline's popping everybody on canals back there. Oh, yeah. And then but, Zer but, but Zerpting was, uh, Zerpting was Me Atlantic City. And then I remember he had that one big event and went to E United. Mm -hmm. And Zerp was a problem in it. But you see, contenders, they're going to have their home hill. They're going to also have a lead as well. They're fighting to get control over the B hill. Now recognizing that they have a quick numbers advantage and knowing that, hey, nobody's going to be on, on winch as well. I like, I like the play of trying to... <laughs> I like the play of trying to take a 2v1 situation that you clearly had. <laughs> but clearly. But but when you no. fight it, but when you fight against praise, you never truly have control over the fight and <laughs> what you're fighting. <laughs> and he proved to us why that it may look sweet, but it's very sour. Like that, that was actually an impossible scenario for Praise, and he was able to come out on top, winning a 1v2 scenario where contenders played it pretty much textbook. They kept their distance and then Praise made sure he, you know, closed the gap in between them, got that first kill on franchise, and cleaned it up. But Rushy's continuing slaughtering this hey, Green Wall team. It's a contender's lead, and uh, they do have all players respawn except Icy. They have some power weapons in their hand. They have Rushy's on the winch area. There you go. He picks up the headshot on the boom shot. Great adjustment by him, even when he had one headshot lined up. Oh, he's, he's off Do just it. a little bit. Do it. He didn't want to waste too much time there. He knew he had to watch his back. Lined up for Mental, though. He sees Mental. Uh oh. Oh, he chooses and this is to gonna be pull the shotty out. But Toddy has the advantage, and Sleepy says, get out. And I like the rotation out. Don't risk it. I like it out. You have the power Stay weapon. Safe. Why risk it in the 1v1? You get the lead, too. Yep, you hear the sound coming. The score is 190 to 136. The tenors are looking to win it all. Rush, he's holding down the home hill with the sniper rifle. You see all of the green wall currently pushing the home hill. And this is it. The boom shot is out. Great I usage see. of power weapons. Able to get a double kill, and that is it. Good job to contenders. They're going to tie this one up two to two. All right, let's see what they're going to do. They're, they're showing how that boom shot strat's been working out for them. Looking good, but... Shout out to Rushies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Big shout out to Rushies doing that round. I'm curious to see... Uh, we're going to see what Greenwall want to put down a counter to that because they are next up on the weapon placement. Could be something down low for B. Ooh, they're going to go for some... Uh, the some aggressive secondary weapons. Going to put that Marksa down. That Marksa... 
has a lot of long range potential. You can also pick up headshots across map with it. That's going to be Summons picking up that weapon, I do believe, for the green wall. And he's definitely going to give, put some damage in with that one. And uh, But we're still going to see this 3v3 fight, right? But the thing yeah. is that the marks of player is going to be so key. He's going to be able to pick up that fight and have a sight line towards that middle map as well to stop anybody from possibly picking up that that drop shot, that boom, sorry, that boom shot in the middle map. Rather than someone's playing down low, he's playing up top over near the sniper rifle. Mento comes up and disrupts the 1v1. Rashi's had no idea. The sniper rifle gets picked up by Mento as Summons continues to rotate down towards the contender's home hill. And this is where the green wall will continue to push up, get all the real estate possible, and try to capture this B-Hill. You know, and that's what happens when you, you know, when you always have players who have to win those, who are covering those lanes, those 1v1 scenarios, kind of like the, the statue in a B cave on Foundation. You know, when we have that boom shot mid map, it's gonna be that B hill area and that stern side. When they are able to push out those 1v1s, they get such key map position. You see how much of an impact they can have on the fight down low. You to. And, uh, ooh, that's a double, that's a down. He's not missing. He's going to play off that down. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. He got the damage in. He was off by just the inch, but he still locked and loaded. Quick shot. No connection. Knows the flank is coming. Trying to help his teammate before he has to worry about the flank. And he's going to miss those two shots. But you know who did it? It was Franchise. Oh, yeah. The game leader doing what's best for his roster. But Cody honing all Frezzy with the marks. He's going to pull out the shotgun. Bounces forward. Gets the up A. Rezik, get out of here. Now, Tody going to help out Praise, but he does need it. Rushies goes down as well. Two players down for contenders. Tody regaining a little bit of health. Sniper rifle is off the board, so the Marxists are the only scope weapons that, in play. That little little V area on that cover right here, that angle, that, that scares me so much because when your back's up against that, that's a headshot, right? Yeah. <laughs> like if you got a sniper at, at that height side of the map, that's a headshot on, on, on time. So, uh, you gotta, he, he has to be careful, but he, he knows that Summons has it. The snipe is going to be in his team's hands, but he's still calling out for reinforcements saying, hey, I need some help. Knowing where his safe spots are, knowing how many shots he can get off in time, but he was trapped in a difficult position, probably wishing that he would have dropped back a little bit sooner, but, you know, you know, he, you know, you live and you learn. Yeah. Oh, Praise knows that he was able to get the down. Yes, he caught it out. Summons was able to get the headshot on Resto from far away, and now, Praise being sandwiched. Reshi's flirting behind him with a shotgun. Praise doing his, his infamous wall straight. Trying to stay alive as long as possible for Red. Finally goes down. Red Icy able to clean up that kill, but the lead highly in favor of the green wall. There's only one hill captured, which is the B hill, and that's under green wall's favor. The beauty about green wall is that they're just saying that, hey, no, both these teams have came to the decision that we're not capping home hills. We're flooding the mid map. We're trying to play for the boom shot off of that respawn. We're trying to play for control. We're trying, you know, th that's why the home hills haven't been, hasn't been capped for this long. Yeah. No hills being capped at this point, but now both teams are recognizing that, hey, we can at least get something. Now, this is now the perfect time for us to drop back and keep the points rolling. And with, even with Greenwald just dropping back before them, it's going to increase that lead. The pressure. <laughs> Okay. You, you got at least know you got to at least get a smoke up in there at this What's point, up, right? Somebody knows that they got to throw a smoke up there to bank it off the wall, go for the pickup, get the stun, make it hard for him at least. But the boom will go in the hands of Green Wall, but you can't get snipes through that crack there. It's a very, uh, you know, small angle, but it does happen. I Green Wall has done such a good job at controlling the sniper. They have. They're, they they're have controlling this. I want to say they got two. Yeah, it's in the summons and the hand. hand. All right, that's good. Oh, no. Summons gives a headshot on Rush. You have two scopes staring at you. I want to see, see Mental get one now. Just back and forth. It's bound to happen. They're scared to push it because they know what they're capable of. And, and because we don't see a lot of back and forth sniper action. No. You know? Very rarely we see two, two snipers get, get uh, in the hands of one team at the same time anymore. All right, Green Back in the day, you see it a lot. Oh, all the time. That was that was a power play. Blaze, you get a snap rifle and I get a snap rifle on canals. Forget about it's it. The reason why everybody loved playing impact on GB for those double snipers. Yes, you're right. Only only Matt. Mm -mm. But that you know what? I, I I will say that that's the one thing I do miss. Because that was you know double snipe fights had such strong. They were intense. They were intense for years, right? Yeah. It was a, it was the impact on the map. It was a huge impact on the map. And having a good sniper on your team was key. It was so important. That strategy was key. We even saw a lot of season one good having job, those guys. double snipes. 
Uh, and, you know, I, you know, I do miss that. If Hudson's is out there in the chat, one of the best snappers I've ever really known. Is. You know, shout out to all the legends out there with the scope. You know, we got, it's a lot of legends in this lot. You know, you got, we got Fran. Okay, Resin. you got mental Icy. Yeah. Gears 3 Icy Snipe was nothing to play with. You eat Icy Snipe wasn't nothing to play with. We saw what Toddy did in Toronto with the sniper rifle. But what happens is that all those talented players and all those game changers, those playmakers with the scope, they have to play different roles because in, uh, in you know, in Escalation, you have to play all roles, right? Yeah. So unless you got a, a loving team who loves to <laughs> just hand it to you every single time, you know, sometimes you don't get it on where you play. Ooh. So. Really nice body shot by Franchise, making sure Praise gets checked just a little bit. Uh oh, that's an angle. He knows it too. <laughs> you get the body shot, now you push that. Pistol out. Now, you know it's about seven seconds on the health regen. You need to make sure you always connect with a bullet. You at least connect with one bullet uh, in that health regen window. You can guarantee that he stays full red. The longer that they're full red, the quicker they panic. So you can get that guy out of cover. But they don't want to take that fight just yet. You're going to start to see the green wall push out just a little bit. It's contenders it's on that defensive stand. They're all going to be dead. And the That's green it. wall coming out, getting that domination. They have the power weapons. They know what's up. Four to two at the half once again. With all of his teammates dying around and franchise was unable to capitalize with the sniper rifle, Praise took note of that and, and continued to push, especially with the teammate behind him by cleaning up the kill on Franchise. Greenwald were able to roam through, capture all the hills, and got the domination. But here we are at halftime. All of the weapons are off the map. The respawn timers are reset. But also the hills change just a little bit. All right. Yep, the hills will change just slightly, but the focus of the map still stays the same. It's going to be Winter Stern unless somebody puts a big power weapon down bottom map. You're going to start to see 4v4 fight. Here we go. Who's going to come out on top? Nice angle over the top. It's going to be the green wall making it there first. By a lot of time. Yeah. You got to ask yourself, why did they have so much time compared to contenders, right? Yeah. Because typically, you are able to... So this is what you got to understand. If somebody ever beats you to a position, you got to understand why did that happen. And it's, it's, it's very simple reasons. A, a, a spawn that was... Uh, in front of you went there, so somebody had a closer spawn to that spot is number one. Number two, somebody had a better route. Yeah. If you figure out, other than that, you should always meet at that exact same spot at your point at the exact same time. Once you are able to accomplish that, then you are able to notice there's the little things where smoke placements, you know, uh, you know, somebody else shooting, the little things affect rounds. And then once you get that, you know, you are really enjoying it. Somebody and that's my it. job to let you guys know yeah. <laughs> when those moments happen. Actually, up the gaming, they were the best on Reclaim, which is a map that is now in a cycle anymore. But a guy named Brainiac out there, he actually timed it. Yeah. Optic, they were the best on that map, only for the simple fact that Mental was the fastest player to get into the bowl area. Yep, and that, that was that's what made the difference, right? Yeah. And that's why that up top bowl became such a smoke fest because now you had to get the best strategic smokes to stun that front spawn from yeah. getting into bowl. But then at one point, now imagine if we had theater in this game, everybody's strategies oh, will be exposed, the right? Would be Next thing you know, you get these smokes down to when a guy gets to a certain spot, he has to throw a smoke. Yep. If not, they may lose the round. And rounds come down to that, but sometimes it's very hard to catch those little bitty details that affect the rounds because you're going to always have smokes off the opening start, and they're being put in certain locations for certain reasons. Once again, Greenwall able to get up top to the E hill for four contenders, but Rushy's taking out Mental. Mental got a team kill. So off the bat, Greenwall down in numbers there, down even more. Four players, three players down. The summons comes out of spawn, and Toadie's trying to hold it down in the 1v1 against Icy, but Icy gets the best of him. Yes, he will. The Greenwall losing this round. Can Mental make it in time? He cannot. Contender back-to-back -back rounds that quickly. They tie it up 4-4 four to four and say, hey, you know what? We got to get back into this one. We can't let this one spiral out of control. And uh, now they should have a little bit of that pressure taken off their shoulders, but they have to come out and win this one. Each team winning two rounds in a row. Nobody yet to find that rhythm that they want to be in to go ahead and pull away. Contenders now tying it up. Toddy putting down the M bar over at the top side of the map. We've seen what both teams can do with scope weapons, so we know that that weapon will be highly utilized. You don't want to see that in the hands of the likes of Icy, Mental, Praised, or even Toddy. So this is going to be a green wall map pick. So 
You know, and, uh, and, they, and they picked it for a reason. But we will see the green wall make it to winch first. The up top, oh, Razzy comes in, gets the quick pick, but he's getting chased down. He's gonna backpack it as well, and they're gonna give up on the chase. That but was slick. That was a great, that was a great pickup, and that's another reason why those smokes become so important. The only way that you run a quick pick strats like that is if the smokes land exactly where you need them to by the time your front spawn gets there to establish that quick pick. But the thing is, if you play Gears of War, you know that to be consistent, even 13 rounds in a row with that exact same smoke, is not the easiest thing in the world at all. You know, uh, and, and depending on the round, that smoke, especially if that's your job, that, that critical smoke, if it comes up even a little short or if it's late, you can lose a round off of that. Yeah. Because that can ultimately lose your initial. And if it's a 24 second respawn round, that's that spell of bad news. Because you're giving up power weapons, neutral hills, and everything. So. Uh, the details come that fine in competitive Gears of War. The 10 is really sticking into the green wall. Now, the Domination Counter coming down. The Tenors have won three rounds in a row. Green wall fighting from behind for the first time this map. Contenders, can they continue the success? Let's see. Reshi's on top with 20 kills. Right behind him will be your end game leader franchise, always leading the way by slaying. All right, so. They're gonna get the Marxes over up top towards the stern area. They're gonna get the M bar there as well. Greenwall saying, hey, we want heavy fights up top no matter what. Contenders on the flip end. They wanted that 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 mid-map push, right? They want yeah. to fight down low. Uh, and you see Greenwall went for that block, and they went for that block for a great reason. They wanted to keep the fights up top, and that's exactly what they've set up for the rest of this game. Let's see what they can do with it. All right, both players. On the home hill, currently capping the support for their teammates, but Reshi runs in trying to get a kill, but Summons shuts him down. We're gonna have two players down, Franchise and Summons, who's gonna get up first. Summons, but Sleepy Time came by, take the second. That Mental is gonna connect that shot on Fran. Craze finds a kill. That's uh, two members down, three members down for contenders. All up to Fran, he's taking a lot of damage, tries to get in there, at least to clean up one of those kills, but he cannot. So now you're gonna see Green Wall with four members down on the side of contenders pushing in on his final kill and get the last player in rushies. Yes, they will. Now they recognize that, hey, everybody gotta come to the spawn. So you see how far they pressed up? They say, hey, we're gonna keep this first line of defense right here. You gotta come in, you're gonna have to fight up first before you can get close to your home hill, and that's map pressure. That was a clean and round. That's the one of the best things that the Optic Gaming team does is just create map pressure. Yeah. Where that typically on some teams, you come out of spawn, you at least know that you got some safe areas. <laughs> nah, it's nowhere that's safe. You gotta be paranoid as soon as you come out. There's somebody around this corner, that corner. Somebody secret man in here or there. So, uh, you know, and when you have pressure on your opponents like that, they make a lot of mistakes, and you want them making as many mistakes as they can. Got that right. Franchise. Taking a look at what weapon he wants to put down so far in his dual spot. It's looking like the hammer burst, but he's going to switch over to Doc. Unsure what a strategy that his team will want to use, but they're going to put down the secondary utility weapon, the hammer burst. The support weapon that puts out a ton of damage, one burst at a time. But on board with Praise, 23 kills, 13 deaths. We saw him picking up heat on Old Town. Double kill after double kill, an MVP in Gears of War at a time. And he is currently on the number one team in the game. It's only fitting that he's matched up with Mental uh, and Explosive. This match point is so important. Plays playing over here towards the ramp side. Gonna get his smoke down that ramp, allow him to push on in. Doesn't get the call out that Rezik pushed through. Nobody saw it on the side of Green Wall. So Rezik looking to cause commotion, but nobody saw Praise either. That's why he didn't touch the hill, but as soon as he moved, Contenders was waiting for him. So now they have a two-man advantage. Fuck yeah. We'll see what they want to do with it. Contenders, they have a history of playing passive, right? That's their play style. They get map control, they stay passive. But when you had, have a two-man advantage and all those power weapons, you got to get aggressive and keep taking your numbers when you can. Keep pushing it out. You know, having players follow that in bar, wolf pack around the map, get more map control. But in oh, this situation, yeah. they just allow Greenwall to have time to think. All five players to spawn up, come up with a strategy, and we'll see if the strategy is good enough to beat the contender setup. Zerbdi taking some shots in the side for Franchise. They're gonna get the down on Rezzy. Franchise currently stunned by the smoke grenade. Able to stay alive long enough to get up and run away. Rush is coming in for rescue, taking out Zerbdi, and now the team fight ensues. Franchise picking up a kill, two straight kills for containers, and with a lance route, Rezzy will make sure Summon is full red as three of his teammates push in for the kill. Oh, they're gonna go for a triple cap, ladies. 
Yeah, they're gonna go they for it. it. They're gonna recognize it now. What is Summers gonna do? He's trying to run away. He's trying to get to eat. Summers is trying to get to eat. I ain't seen him die just yet. But does he have enough time? Nah, no, that's gonna be it. Contenders, map point. All right, let's see if they can force a map number three. It's been a difficult fight night for them so far. It's been too close for comfort. But place. if they can get to that third map, I'm pretty sure they'd be extremely happy with that one. All right. This is a nade spot. This is a nade placement. Anything wilder than nades is, I don't see it happening. Put a boom shot down everywhere, Toddy. Oh, yeah, oh. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he stopped for a second. <laughs> he thought about it. They're gonna go for that. They're gonna go for that overkill, <laughs> which is gonna be deadly in the right hand. So, we'll if they pick it up, if yeah, they pick it, it up and use it, oh, I'm gonna lose it. If they get it, but all right, now coming down, we have two rounds left in this map. It might just be one. Right, continue to see what they're made of. Going against three fifths of Optic Gaming, the Green Wall. Let's take a look at the basic. We're gonna have three people going towards the Stern and Winch area, and with the smokes coming out, let's see who gets the first blood. Red is gonna go ahead and get the M bar. Full red, and he's gonna be able to get away. That miss one mark. So whoever that marked the player was for the Green Wall just missed one shot to get that down on Red. And at that point, somebody from Green Wall was cleaned it up. It was an okay strategy, but now Rezik has his M bar in hand and he's super deadly with it. Contenders, they're gonna lose a player. They have another one down. They're gonna lose two players. Rezik has to make something happen. He's getting a little crossfire from Icy across the map, but it's not enough. And now Icy, the last man standing, needs to extend this round to push across map. But you already have Zerfting watching the cut. He cannot go that direction. You gotta go back to your hill, but you really can't go there either. The green wall pushes in, caps the hill, and folks, we're gonna have our first round 13. You know what that means, here. plays. Round 13, they're going for the bread. Our first round 13 Woo! of the year, Vale. It feels good. I love it. Contenders, let's see if they can go ahead and tie the series 1-1. One, one. They can start right now by winning this one round. If they lose, that is it for them. Green Wall will be your champions. Let us know in the chat. Put a one for con put a one for Green Wall and a two for contenders. All you right. guys, well, who you guys think is, is gonna win this one? Let's see, Val. Who, who do you, who do you think is gonna win this one? <sighs> <laughs> I, actually, I think it's Green Wall. I think it's Green Wall I, too. I think it's Green Wall in this one. <laughs> contenders should win, but this has been a rough matchup lately, man. Well, you go back to the strategy though, right? And you go back to having this boom there. Oh, they put the boom in the middle. The marks of player. Whoever, whoever's been picking it's up so marks key. up for either team, that's who I kind of want to, kind of want to watch because he has an angle on top of that boom shot, which is important. But we're gonna see towards the quick pick. We're gonna be on board with contenders. Can they force the map Smoke. number three? Will Greenwall take this one away from 2-0? Looking in, inward, you see icy. You see the pressure. Smokes everywhere. We see a 2v1 towards the other side of the map. 2v2 two two for Hummins, that for Sun is there. Both these teams playing it kind of slow, looking for their advantages. The fight may happen up top rather than down low. And you got a few contenders players up there. Oh, that's a steal made as well. Both teams being super patient. First. So if we were to stay like this, the winner would be contender because they capped their home hill a split second sooner. But somebody's you know, going to make a move. That stipulation is going to change soon. They're looking for the, for the right move. This is some classic execution all oh, the gameplay. Summons, Summons the first the playmaker. He calls for help. They're both weak. They're panicking. Summons did what he had to do. Rezik dies for his teammate to get Rushies out of there. Tony gets the kill. Taking out CP Town. Rezik dies as well. The Mbar is in Mitchell's hands. This could be it, Blaze. Summons tried to take the game in his hand and make the play, but it's Rushies. Rezik died to keep him alive. Now Rushies, can he make the play for his team? Can he get it done? Fran scurrying back to defend his home hill. That M bar is in the hand of Mental. Rushies being sneaky, he goes down finally. That's gonna be three members down. Green Wall understands the situation. They're trying to push forward. The melee goes in. Fran just trying to make something happen. He goes down. Three, two, one. Green Wall comes out on top. And they're your North American 2K champions and your first 2K fight night winner of the year for the North American radio.